Welcome back, everyone. Today you should get ready for more craziness, since we are going to use a bunch of Eyes of Harmony to contain multiple universes. Crafting one of those takes a lot of time and many machines which we used to think were already expensive on their own. And it will also take some new blocks which are just as much expensive. And all of those blocks will recursively contain other expensive stuff. Also we need some parts that are rather slow to process. Even with our extruder powered by HUMV energy hatches. Thus, we shall build more of those. Which means we will be needing more energy hatches. And what we now lack of is water. So we have to look into a proper source of water, and a kitchen sink doesn't seem to work properly. Luckily the reservoir hatch seems to work well enough, if we give it enough time to stock up fluid in a second storage. Now that we have water, we can start working on fixing the next issue, assembly lines. Our old generic setup has a couple of issues, when crafting slow things, new things can queue up and end up having to wait too much time. So, we shall expand it, but, this time, we will use advanced assembly lines. Those will leave some items in the buses, locking the usage. Also, those can do parallel crafting, when the conditions allow for it. But doing parallel while also allowing for multi-purpose crafting has its caveat, requiring a more complex setup we may see later on. Anyways, we now got to the point of researching the main block of the Eye of Harmony which is starting to require a lot of computation. And, while we get the research done, we can also get the crafting items ready. Once we got to the point of crafting it, we realized that this is going to take too much time. We have no hurry for that, but since this is using relatively no power, we can overclock it. Don't worry about voiding the crafting. Since this is an advanced assembly line, we only lost the first item and the fluids meaning a bunch of space elevators and neutronium. To overclock it, we shall use a laser hatch that can bring half of our total energy production. This assembly line is going to work with a single slice, so it won't use more than 3% of our production. Meanwhile, we also have a bunch of assembly lines with dedicated recipe for parallelization. Those are probably going to be working way more often and at full capacity, so we throttle them by lowering the amperage. And to get those amounts of power in that place we will need a better capacitor, which we shall place in a dedicated nearby LSC. With that, we can now start crafting things that will use one Dyson Sphere of power for 45 seconds over 16 steps. Meanwhile, using three Dysons of power, we can quickly craft the other parts. However, before getting to that point we had to fix a couple of things. The last step of the crafting was supposed to be time consuming, but the other steps are resource intensive. And the main issue was our circuit production. Those things are so clogged that the issue even falls to our crafting network storage. Thus it is time to increase the size of our circuit factory. And that was the first floor of circuit production. So we slowly work through each of the floors of our factory which was overall quite easy thanks to the newly discovered tools. With those new circuits, we can quickly finish up the crafting of our first Eye of Harmony. And this is one more multi-block with special requirements. The first being the need to change our game UI size to properly see what it does. From a single run of that thing, we are going to get huge amount of every kind of resource. But what we care about is the condensed raw stellar plasma mixture and white dwarf matter. However, the recipe time is really high and takes more inputs than we can input in a single tick. So we will probably look into some overclocking for the first few iterations. To help us with that and other future planning, we can use this helpful spreadsheet suggested by the quest book. All is left to do is to load up the Eye of Harmony with the input fluids, which will take some time. Once it has enough, we can turn it on. However, it looks like it's not going to produce anything. And that is because we fed it too much fluid. And the meaning of that fancy formula is that you get nothing if you insert 5% fluid more than needed. So, to insert exact amounts, we shall use a convoluted system that involves AE2 and crafting cards. After slowly charging up the machine, we managed to make it run with full output and with a recipe that will finish in less than an hour. 
and that overclock took the power we accumulated in a couple of days. Anyways, that machine is still in its crude state. We want to upgrade it at least to perfect if we want to produce molten universium, the material used in any UXV part. However, getting a perfect hive harmony requires black dwarf matter, which can be obtained from the advanced tier onwards. To get those, we lack of white dwarf matter and infinity. We have already built a lot of DTPFs, so we shall look for a better way, such as upgrading one with a transdimensional alignment matrix. That thing will speed up our infinity production by 20 times. Meanwhile, the white dwarf matter has become a major issue. Our production is already too low and our power production can't even keep up with that little production. To get a better understanding of the situation, we can go back to our spreadsheet and see how our energy production and objective progress varies in function of overclocks. And getting the tier 4 of Eye of Harmony like that is not going to be okay. To increase the production there are many ways. An interesting one is upgrading the time dilatation field generators, thus cutting in for the time required but with a 20% chance of recipe failing. The issue is that those will cost white dwarf matter, but a more reasonable amount. That will still take some time, which we can use to further upgrade our power production. With all of that time at our disposal, we managed to build more than 100 Dyson spheres, enough to fill an ultimate battery in 3 hours. And once we manage to gather enough white dwarf matter, we can upgrade our time dilatation field generators to tier 3. Which will yield around 3 times more than the tier 1. And to round up our production to 1 millibucket per second, we can use the leftover parts on a second eye of harmony. And to avoid having to build a second convoluted gas loading system, we have split the complex part in a way that can be shared across multiple machines. Anyways, as said, we are now producing white dwarf matter 4 times faster, but it's still not enough to reach the tier 4 in a reasonable amount of time. Tier 4 is required for the black dwarf matter, but, for a fifth of the cost, we can move to tier 3. While on the current setup it doesn't make a huge difference, it will allow for usage of tier 3 dimensions, which won't make black dwarf matter yet, but will make huge amount of white dwarf matter, allowing for faster tier 4 progression. So, while we wait a couple of hours for the missing materials, we can go and take a trip inside one of our pocket universes we have created, where we can admire the creation and destruction of the stars from which we extract the dwarf matter. And after exploring multiple microverses, we gather enough materials to increase the tier of our space-time compression field generators, which means that we can now contain tier 3 dimensions, thus making 4 times the amount of white dwarf matter. The issue now has become our assembly lines again. We are not using those at their full potential. We have some generic ones which are not using the parallel feature and other specific that require to manually set the filters for the recipe they do. However, we just noticed a feature that could help us fix all our issues and make the perfect assembly line setup. A setup that will allow for multi-recipe parallel crafting on multiple assembly lines at once. Explaining how it works doesn't fit in this video, but you can just admire here how nicely it works. And that is just one of the many assembly lines that will manage slow craftings. We will want more of those, but, while making it, we already finished the tier 4 eye of harmony. This will make black dwarf matter, but, with those settings, the production is too low. So we made more eyes of harmony to stock up a lot of white dwarf matter for other upgrades. The perfect eye of harmony requires quite some black dwarf matter, so let's see how we can get to it. As of now. That would take approximately 100 hours and on a power loss which we could fix by making a bunch more of Dyson spheres. We could speed up the process by making more tier 4 eyes, but then we would probably have to lower the overclock setting. The best option is probably to do one step at a time, thus working on a tier 5 eye of harmony. Which will allow for a faster tier 6. At that point we notice that our success rate is getting too low. We can trade some yield to increase it. And, once we have the tier 6, we will be able to work on the tier 7. But we will probably want to first make a bunch more of tier 6 and lower the overclocking. And, of course, 
mass producing those machines like that started to be heavy for our experimental assembly line, so we had to add a bunch more, which we are now connecting wirelessly, and, with that, we now have a bunch of eyes, which finally managed to produce some universium. To use it, we shall start by solidifying it into ingots which we then extrude into blocks. With those, we can now make universium nanites, which have many usages, but the main one is going to be making magnetohydrothermically constrained star matter, which is used in all of the parts and components of the next and last tier. But there are still a couple of materials we still don't have access to. The first one is eternity. To get that stuff, we start by acquiring some time pieces. Then we add a group of universium nanites to get the temporal harmonizer catalyst. This will allow us to produce eternity, but it will use some chronic singularities, which we will be able to make easily using some eternity, but, for the first iteration, we have to go with the more expensive way. Also, to get more eternity out of our recipe loop, we can add some fermium and neptunium plasma. The other main ingredient for the next tier is magmatter. This stuff is produced in the Heliofusion Exocytizer Gorge module. However, making it is not as easy as it might seem. To begin with, we have to unlock the last upgrade of the forge. And that is going to take a lot of graviton shards. Which means we have to use our forge more to reach more milestones. An easy one to do is to process some more stuff. Since we have different issues doing it as a single step, we shall split the task to multiple CPUs. And it turns out that making a quarter of integer 32 steel ingots took a single tick. We repeat the process a bunch of times to get our new shards. However, those didn't get us far. So we retrieve some from unneeded upgrades, then. After making one more upgrade, which also took all of our really ultimate batteries, we again run out of shards. Luckily, there is a weird looping recipe that can make us easily melt overflowing amount of stuff. However, we now maxed out the conversion milestone and need to do something else, like heating up some nitrogen. Heating it up to plasma uses quite a lot of power, thus helping us reach the next charge milestone. With that, we are now in front of the last upgrade. The main issue here is the crazy amount of batteries we need. Currently, the only thing we lack of to craft those is some heavy ray docks. But let's get things more in perspective. Crafting those batteries is a recursive process, meaning that the situation gets exponentially worse. Luckily, we unlocked a better way of making batteries that hugely cut the cost. However, that still used up the same amount of components that heavily use Naquadria. Since we couldn't produce enough, we have been integrating with some heavy ray docks. We could increase its production, but there is a better way of solving this issue. We can do an even higher skip, by using some of the newly acquired materials. But that is going to take quite some universium, so we better keep an eye on that. Or maybe even more than one. Actually, let's be specific. To get the 10 millions universium required in less than a day, we'd need 100 maxed out eyes of harmony. So, for the moment, we better off find a better way of making Naquadria. Increasing our ore or collection is the main way, but there's something else we can do. By adding some catalysts to our quantum force transformer, we can increase the output and also focus more of the outputs to the one we care about. And that was the only thing we lacked of to craft the required batteries. Then we spend some time AFK to unlock the next catalyst milestone, so that we have enough shards to complete the path that will allow us to process magmatter. However, producing such materials is not as easy as throwing random stuff in a machine. After getting an Heliofusion Exoticizer in magmatter mode, we have to complete its minigame. Once started this machine will give us a tiny pile of some expensive materials, followed by some drops of space-time products. To get magmatter, we have to send back the difference between the two fluids as ingots of the material of the tiny dust in plasma form. So, we quickly improvise a way of quickly getting the needed plasma and give it back to the exoticizer with also the other two fluids it gave us. And with that, we have finally obtained our first magmatter. The issue now is finding a way of automating that process. 
And maybe that actually is as easy as throwing random stuff at our new machine. All we have to do is make sure it always has any of the 14 different plasmas at its disposal. And we can loop back the other two fluids since we won't be doing any math with that setup. Now that we have Magmata, we can finally work on the UX V components. And, I gotta say, this is a really sophisticated motor since not only it contains wetware mainframes in some of its winding, it also contains ultra high tier electrical circuitry inside the balls of its bearings. Anyways, after quickly researching UXV energy hatches, we upgrade our implosion compressor. This will allow us to unlock all the recipes, such as the one that will cut in half the universium cost when making magnetohydrodynamically constrained star matter. Then, to further reduce material usage, we will want a new XV component assembly line, but we are quickly reminded that our universium production is quite low. So we start crafting our first maxed out eye of harmony, all made out of Gallifreyan parts. That thing is now so powerful that it can contain one whole solar system. And, not only will it give off huge amounts of any raw material present in the game, it will also produce more energy than it uses. And to load it at a decent speed, we now have access to the humongous input hatch. But that thing still produces only 1.6 liters of universium per second. And to get just one UXV component assembly line we need 27 millions of liters of that stuff. It doesn't take much to understand that we are going nowhere even if we were to spam more of those machines. So we have to research for something even better than the best tier. And we came up with one quite interesting solution, the Astral Fabricator Array. Those things are meant to be inserted inside an Eye of Harmony to add parallelism, with some downsides. The first one we notice is that the power output goes negative. But working in that mode will consume raw stellar plasma mixture, and we will be going negative on that stuff too. That is caused mostly by the low success rate, but we can downgrade one-time dilatation field generator to go back to positive production. Now it is just a matter of figuring out how many astral array we will need to get a good enough source of universium, and how to keep up with the power consumption. Anyways, since our old setup isn't making enough materials, we tear it down so that we can recycle it to make our first astral array. And that thing alone with an almost maxed out eye of harmony is already going to make 5 times as much as our old maxed out eye, but that is still not enough. Thus we started the mass production of astral array fabricators, and with that, we are now exponentially increasing our universium production, or at least we were, until our batteries run dry, but we managed to complete our UXV component assembly line just in time. As usual, this machine will make us use way less materials for each component. This time, we even skip the compressing of the materials. But we still have to insert part of the circuits. Anyways, now that we have completed all of the UXV stuff and unlocked everything in the pack, there is only one last challenge left for us. But I think that's something we can do in the next episode. And the lesson today is to always keep the coolest stuff hidden so we can have an even greater last episode. Bye bye.